606, I call the Southern Planning Zoning Commission meeting to order. Roll call, please. Penny Flores. Present. Ronald Rice. Present. Lorena Sileta. Present. Louis Galavis. Present. Arturo Magaña. Present. Mario Ranquel. Present. Maribel Valenzuela. Present. The chair of your platform. Very well, Mr. Sanford Flint. Congratulations to the Republic for what it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That brings us to item three, call to the public. Anybody from the public wishing to address uh, any zoning commission? Very well, hearing you and are seeing none. We move on to item number one, zoning cortex amendment case PLM 21-0013. Mr. Chair, uh, I'll just take a little the approval of the minutes for okay. the yes. item number four. Okay. I don't know, for approval of minutes from February 22nd, 2021 regular meeting. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second to approve minutes for February 22nd, 2021 regular meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number one, Zoning Cortex Amendment Case PLM I need to um, pull up a power room presentation for them for TV screen. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Before I begin, I just want to make sure that you are able to see the screen which I'm sharing right now. It should be a PowerPoint. Perfect. Um, it's, it says it's connected. Uh, for those uh, commissioners joining us on Zoom, are you able to see the screen which I'm sharing? It should be a PowerPoint presentation. No.
Just a brief moment, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Are you, are you able to see the presentation now, members of the commission? Yes. yes. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, sorry for the delays, everyone. It's um, you all know how Zoom is by now. It's <laughs> it's not a perfect system, but uh, eventually we'll get it. So this is the first item is tax amendment case PLN twenty one. Dash zero zero thirteen. This is a uh, text amendment case to our zoning code. So we have our, our zoning code, which is our guiding document for the city. This is our book. Uh, it tells us um, all the regulations for just about every use and where it can be located and under what conditions. So we are amending this to reflect certain sex, uh, certain requested changes and needed changes sections of our zoning ordinance. The sections that we are amending relate to marijuana establishments, swimming pool barriers, and school locations. These amendments are city sponsored, meaning the city took the initiative to change these sections of the zoning ordinance. Uh, it wasn't initiated by someone from the public or by a developer, it was by the city. And the changes are required because, as you all know, recreational marijuana is now legal in the state of Arizona, so we are amending our code to reflect that. And also, um, we've been um, seeing the need to amend the other sections for a while now, but since we're doing a big amendment for marijuana, we decided to just put these three together and do a general text amendment of those three sections. So these are the sections which we are amending or we are proposing, we as a city staff, to be amended in the zoning ordinance. Um, these are all the sections that we currently have that is related to medical marijuana, but we need to amend those to reflect regulations for recreational marijuana. Um, this is the most complex of the three uh, sections to be amended. That's why it has the most sections that need to be amended. And then the second one is for swimming pool barrier regulations. That's only one section and we're only changing two sentences in that text. And I'll go through all the verbiage in a second. And lastly, we are amending a section uh, that relates to the location of schools where schools can be located in the city of Somerton. So if it's okay with the commission, I'm just gonna go down the list as, it, as they appear here and show you what these amendments actually are, what changes we've made. Would that be okay? Yeah. Thank you. So I'm gonna start with the uh, changes to the marijuana section. I'm gonna briefly switch over my screens. There we go. 
Okay. So beginning with the biggest change that we are making, we're proposing to, to, to happen is section 3.1.5M of the Summerton Zoning Ordinance. Currently, it addresses the need for, uh, sorry, it addresses the requirements and regulations for medical marijuana dispensary and cultivation sites. We are proposing to eliminate the entire section. It's a big section too. The entire section, including uh, zoning requirements, siting requirements, location, uh, use as definitions, everything is being eliminated and replaced with a new section. And this new section is in, is, it, it just directly replaces the old section. And this is um, what's highlighted is everything that is new. So section M now becomes medical marijuana and marijuana establishment and, and testing facilities. First of all, we have all four definitions, four new definitions for nonprofit medical marijuana dispensary, marijuana establishment, and uh, dual licensee for me, there's three definitions, not four. So nonprofit medical marijuana dispensary is a medical dispensary. A marijuana establishment is a recreational marijuana dispensary. Whether or not it has on-site or on-site cultivation or not. And a dual licensee means someone who has both medical and recreational licenses. Those are the definitions. As far as the uh, the siting where these uses can be located, we are not uh, distinguishing between medical and recreational. What does affect the location is whether or not they have cultivation or not. So we're proposing that these uses, when they do have on-site cultivation, they may be permitted in the light industrial and C2 general commercial zoning district. When they do not have on-site cultivation, when it's just a retail operation, whether it be medical or recreational, they can be located in the light industrial, the C2 general commercial, the MSC Main Street Corridor Zoning District, and or the infill incentive overlay entertainment district. So when they don't have cultivation, they can site basically along the downtown area of Main Street. Any questions so far as to the use definitions, uh, the difference between on-site cultivation and no on-site cultivation, and the districts where we're proposing these uses be permitted? Um, we're, uh, we are keeping, we had a work session with the Planning and Zoning Commission last month, and um, we didn't change a whole lot from that point to now in this section. We covered basically everything that I'm showing you at that work session. But one thing that did change that I want to point out is uh, we made a change to the uh, supplemental siting requirements. So right now, what we've been working with is we've been looking at these dispensaries kind of like if they were uh, liquor stores. You know, a liquor store has to be 300 feet away from certain protected uses. So we were treating them as such and we were proposing that both medical and Recreational dispensaries should be at least 300 feet away from uh, a residence, educational facility, library, public park, daycare facility, worship assembly, or other dispensary. And that was, oh, and, and um, that, uh, that uh, requirement would not apply here to the entertainment district because Arizona's rise statute allows 
an entertainment district to be exempt from certain location distances. So that's pretty much staying the same. The only except, uh, change that we made is a little bit here in the wording, so I'm just going to read this to you as it's written in the text. No medical marijuana dispensary, marijuana establishment, or dual licensee shall be located within 300 feet of the property line of a parcel having a protected use that exists in legal zoning conformance relative to its zoning district. Protected uses shall include all the following that I just mentioned. Properties located inside the infill incentive overlay entertainment district shall be exempt from this requirement. Distance shall be measured from the building housing the medical marijuana dispensary, marijuana establishment, or dual licensee to the property boundary of the parcel containing the protected use. Do you understand what the, what that those requirements are? Okay. Uh, we also kept section B, which says that uh, a this medical marijuana dispensary or marijuana establishment having no on-site cultivation, which is retail only, located on the Main Street corridor and or infill incentive overlay, shall not be located within 100 feet of a property line of a restaurant or bar dispensing alcoholic beverages. That stayed in there. Uh, we had some feedback from the city council and from uh, certain staff members, and they just felt that this was a, a good idea to have at this point. Um, there, are not, there aren't going to be that many of them coming into Somerton anyway, so we don't see a reason why we can't leave that in there. And it's not going to be an, uh, a burdensome impediment, we believe. So that's staying in there as, as we're proposing it. <sighs> Lastly, the section also addresses testing facilities. Right now, we only have sections for medical marijuana testing, and they're allowed both in the C2 general commercial and in the light industrial zoning districts. But we are creating now the new marijuana testing facility, which is for recreational. There's really no difference between recreational testing and medical testing from what I hear. Uh, the process is the same, it's just the product's different. But they're both science, lab facilities, high tech, very um, uh, pharmaceutical in nature. It's not, it's, it, it looks like a high tech laboratory. It could be a, at a university. So we believe that these facilities, instead of being permitted in C2 and in light industrial, we're just going to permit them in the light industrial zoning district. The supplemental siting requirements are identical to the um, dispensaries. 300 feet protected use that exists in legal. Yeah. We are also amending all the tables to reflect the wording in the section. So I'll start with the first one. Uh, mixed use, zoning district, table of uses. I'm just gonna scroll down. And you'll notice that there is now a newly inserted medical marijuana and marijuana establishment use in the Main Street Corridor zoning district is a permitted use, meaning it is non-conditional other than the conditions and requirements specified in the section I just went over, section 3.1.5 and the code will reference, reference you back to that section. I'm gonna proceed now with the uh, commercial zoning district table of uses. Where are we? There we go. So in the commercial table of uses, here's the use, medical marijuana and marijuana establishment. It is prohibited in C1, in the C1 neighborhood commercial. 
dispensaries will be limited when in a commercial zoning district to a C2 general commercial on Main Street and in areas having significant traffic adjacent to arterial roads, big commercial areas, not in little commercial, uh, sorry, not little residential neighborhoods with a C2 pocket. And again, in C2, it is permitted by right, no conditional use permit references you back to section 3.1.5M. So lastly, we have the industrial district table of uses. It is a, here it is, medical marijuana and marijuana testing facility. This is testing facilities now. So we were talking about dispensaries right now, retail. Uh, and so now we're talking about testing facilities and this is only permitted in the light industrial zoning district. By right references you back to section 3.1.5M. It is prohibited in heavy industrial um, why is it prohibited in heavy industrial? Because heavy industrial, we don't have very many, very many parcels that are zoned for heavy industrial. And uh, these testing facilities, as mentioned, they're lab settings, high tech, pharmaceutical research. Um, so it's much more compatible with light industrial. Oh. What's this down here? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's all, and we also have our establishments, which are uh, retail dispensaries, are also permitted by right in light industrial, along with testing facilities. I was thrown off there a little bit as to why we had two highlighted uses in that one. Lastly, I would like to conclude this section about we still have a text amendment to go through. We have the other sections, but the marijuana, I just want to show you the definitions that we're also, in our zoning code, section nine has the definitions for every single use. Whenever there's a dispute as to what my business or what my proposal actually is, we go to this table or to this uh, list, section nine definitions. So we're eliminating the medical marijuana dispensary operation and cultivation definition. And we are replacing it in its entirety with the newly created medical marijuana and marijuana, oops, sorry, I did not mean to do that. Medical marijuana and marijuana establishment, which includes all the following uses, nonprofit medical marijuana dispensary, marijuana establishments, so medical marijuana and recreational marijuana, and also dual licensee. Those are going into the definitions and shall become the use definitions adopted by the city of Summerton if approved. Also, we are creating a new definition for uh, medical marijuana and marijuana testing facility. Tucked in there right between mobile food vendors and grade schools. So that is, that concludes my presentation on marijuana, the section of the code related to marijuana that we're proposing to amend. Are there any questions from the commission at this point related to the text amendment? I know it's a lot, but I think, um, I think I can answer any questions you may have. I have a question, Saul. So after looking through all of this and, and where they can't establish and so forth, so in reality, where, what leaves, what area does it leave? Well, uh, Commissioner Sandeka, there are, there, after this amendment, if, if approved by the city council, council, um, there will be a lot of areas where these dispensaries could locate. We have um, hundreds of parcels along Main Street where they could be located. There's also plenty of undeveloped land to the west and to the east of Main Street of the core of Somerton that's zone C2. And 
or light industrial that they could build a new building and, and, and site there. So I, I mean, there were, it's going to be a lot more uh, flexible now, especially because the distance requirement to the protected uses is proposed to drop from 1,000 feet to 300 feet. And that helps out a lot tremendously because before this amendment, what we have right now, we only allow medical, first of all. There was only one or two parcels in the entire Somerton city limit that would satisfy that thousand foot separation requirement because it's measured from property line to property line. But with the new requirement, we're dropping it to 300 feet and it's measured from building to property line. And we're also including the main street corridor area. We're adding hundreds, hundreds of parcels that, are, that one could cite as long as they're within 300 feet of any of the protected uses. I'm sorry. They are not, sorry, they are not within 300 feet of any of the protected uses. They are not within, right. And so, you know, going um, west, the new high school, hopefully soon, and then the new elementary school, that's, you know, and then the new elementary school is going to be built close to the industrial uh, Yepco Park over there. So I know it's not 300 feet, but, you know, I don't so, know. So the Yepco example is actually a pretty good example. Um, right now, the school's not there yet, but if the school was there, um, the, if a medical marijuana or a recreational marijuana dispensary wanted to locate at Yepco, the first thing we would do is we would measure, are you within 300 feet of the school? And if you're not, then there's just, you would, either, you would either have to find a new location or they could apply for a variance, but I don't think a variance would be very likely at that place. But the elementary school, that's where it's, it's gonna go. So I know it's not there yet, but you know, does, is it? So there are um, at Yepco, the majority of the parcels where, um, uh, so the majority of the parcels at Yepco, the lots at Yepco, they are within 300 feet of that future school location. So they, they would not qualify. The ones, there are a handful that perhaps could, I'm not sure, be outside of that 300 foot uh, radius, but I know that two of them are uh, already purchased and, and currently being used. So there's there's not a whole lot of possibilities right there at Yepco. Uh, we would have to see if one does decide to come in there one day. If it's if they're following all the steps, or they're outside of the 300 feet um, as written, you know, they would be allowed to locate there, assuming there's still an empty lot and assuming that they're still they're out they're outside of the 300 foot area. Right, thank you. But I, I don't think the possibilities for, for that are, are very high because we're still making it strict enough so that we can ensure that they're not going to be springing up next to these sensitive uses, protected uses. Okay, thank you. Saul, I have a question, please. Yes, Mr. Rice. Uh, I, I assume this has all been vetted by the uh, city attorney and, and in compliance with the Arizona laws? Yes, sir. It's been uh, thoroughly reviewed by our city attorney. Um, all, the, all the stages of the draft up to this point have been reviewed by our uh, city attorney. And we've had, um, well, to answer your question, yes, it's been thoroughly. I was going to Begin talking about the public input process that we've had to the uh, work sessions that we've had with the city council with the planning and zoning commission. Um, everything has been done as required by state statute and more. This time we actually went out of our way to make the process as uh, get everyone involved that needed to be involved in as early as possible to ensure that we have a uh, solid document at this point. Okay, thank you. One, one question, so. Yes, Commissioner. Um, just a general question is, 
Um, the 300 feet uh, area, is that an arbitrary number? Is that research? What, what's the reasoning behind the, it has to be at least 300 feet away from a business? Commissioner Magana, so um, when we were just, when we were first getting started with beginning to draft our amendment, the first thing we looked at was the state law, AR, the Arizona Revised Statutes, see if there was a minimum number that we had to comply with. And it turns out that it's completely up to cities. You can, it can be zero or it can be, the municipality sets it, um, basically. Yeah. Based off of that, we started looking at, okay, what would be a good number right now for medical marijuana? We only had, we had a thousand feet. That's what we had. So we started thinking, do we want to keep it at a thousand feet or do we want to make it more flexible? Well, our direction was to be more flexible. So we looked at uh, similar uses of that nature and we just uh, settled on a liquor store. So a liquor store has to be within 300 feet of certain uses. So we thought they were, they, these two uses are comparable enough that we could make a case for 300, a 300 foot requirement for a marijuana dispensary. So that's why we settled on a 300 feet. We drafted it up and we've been presenting it to everyone. Uh, the city council at a work session, we presented it to the planning and zoning commission at a work session. We've uh, had feedback with the public and everyone seems to be Fairly comfortable with 300 feet, but it's um, it's a number that we just uh, thought would be appropriate, and it's so far we're having positive feedback. So that's where the 300 feet comes from. Great, thank you. Any further questions related to that section? If it's okay with the uh, chairman, I'd like to um, go on to the next section, which we're proposing to amend. Thank you. Okay, so the next section of the Summers and Zoning Ordinance that we are proposing to amend is section 3.2.6J, swimming pools. We are not amending uh, the, uh, the whole section. We're actually just striking out a requirement and inserting an exception. So in Somerton right now, and I'm just uh, summarizing what the section says, all swimming pools have to be fully enclosed by a physical barrier in order to obtain a final approval from the city and to pass inspection. We did some research on this and it turns out that Somerton is the only city in Yuma County, including the jurisdiction county itself, that does not give residents the option to install an alarm system instead of a physical barrier. So in Somerton, there is no way around this right now. If you want a pool, you're putting up a barrier or it's not passing inspection. That's as simple as that. And over the years, we've encountered a lot of pushback on this, but it's getting to a point now that before we used to get one or two pool permits a year, one or two, three at most. Right now we're getting about 20, 20 to 30 pool permits a year in Somerton. Pools are becoming, a, uh, they're becoming in demand. They're coming in a lot more frequently. And um, along with that, the, the call to eliminate that requirement has also gotten louder. So, 
After doing some research, we believe that it would be uh, appropriate if we were in line with the rest of Yuma County to allow this exception. So this is except the exception which we are inserting. Uh, so I'm just going to read what's in the code right now. Second J, swimming pool. The very first requirement on there. Every swimming pool shall be completely enclosed by a permanent fence, wall, or barrier to restrict access to the swimming pool from public property, from adjacent private property, and directly from all dwelling units or guest rooms located on the same premises as the swimming pool. These swimming pool enclosure and barrier detail requirements apply to all new swimming pools installed on or after the effective date of this ordinance and to all additions, alterations, repairs, or replacements made to the existing swimming pool enclosures. So it's pretty uh, cut and dry right there. You have to have a barrier. There are some exceptions, um, and they're basically, if you built your pool before this code was in place, you don't have to put up a fence. Unless if someone under the age of six moves into the house, then you are uh, required to put up a fence. Not a lot of people know this, and we don't go around policing this, but it's there in the code. It also makes an exception that if you have an above ground pool, meaning not, not an in ground, but you know, like the ones you buy at Walmart or Sam's Club, or even a, a more fancier spa, hot tub, um, if it's 48 inches above the ground, you don't have to have a barrier around it. This is all for safety, this barrier. It's to, so that a little kid doesn't go in there and jump in. But if the pool's high enough that they can't climb that easily, then there's no need to have the barrier at that point. So those are the two exceptions, basically. If it's above ground or if it was grandfathered in before the ordinance. So we are creating this new subsection, uh, uh, yes, exception number four, which reads, an approved alarm system continuously maintained at all points of ingress and egress to the dwelling unit and from guest rooms may substitute the barrier requirement from the swimming, from the dwelling unit to the pool whenever no children under the age of six are permanent occupants of the property. It shall be the owner's responsibility to maintain this alarm system fully functional at all, functional at all times this exception does not eliminate the requirement to restrict access to the pool from public or adjacent private property using a permanent wall fence or barrier. So let me just summarize that exception that we're doing. If you don't have kids under the age of six living at the house, you may install an alarm system, system at every point of ingress and egress of the house instead of putting up a barrier. It's only people that do not have kids under the age of six who qualify for this exemption. And again, this is all for safety. But we at least want to offer those residents who are, it's an all adult household and they, they have their dream backyard in their pool and they want to do it their way, we'll at least have something to offer them instead of a hard no like we do right now. That is the accept, uh, that is the amendment for section 3.2.6J. Are there any questions on that? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, um, I don't think there are any questions, so I'd like to proceed to the last uh, section of the zoning ordinance, which we are proposing to amend, if that's okay. Thank you. Um, another second here. So the last section of the zoning ordinance we're proposing to amend under this text amendment case is section 3.1.4D. And this is schools, public 
or private boarding college or university. We're not making a huge change on this. Everything else we're leaving as is. The only thing that we are proposing to remove from this section is a siting requirement which prohibits uh, elementary schools to being located adjacent to arterial roads or roads of higher classification, as well as requiring high schools, boarding schools, and colleges to be located on a collector roadway or higher for the Summerton Transportation Plan. Summerton's unique because it's a, it's a small town that's completely surrounded by farmland and there are very few places where, where a school can be located. So when a school does find land to build, these hard requirements such as these can sometimes prove to be an impediment to the, to the development of that school. What we are proposing, instead of it just being in the code saying you have to be here or you can't be here, period, is that every large development such as a school be required a traffic impact study to determine if it's viable to be cited at the proposed location. So we're just taking out these uh, codified restrictions and replacing them with, um, well, it's not, we're not proposing to add the traffic impact study uh, wording in here, but that's the practice that we will do. And the reason we're not doing that is because sometimes the, tra the city does traffic impact studies, or perhaps there's a master plan development adjacent that is required a traffic impact study and the school could more or less use that same study. But if there's significant doubt about the viability of a roadway being able to handle a school, we will require a traffic impact study. And if a traffic impact study says that this high school may in fact be located when Summerton's you know, 40,000 population and we get another high school, if there's another, uh, if there's a school coming and they want to locate on a, lo a site on a local street, at least, uh, the, the option will be there. It won't be a no from the beginning. Same goes for elementary schools. If an elementary school wants to locate on an arterial roadway, um, a traffic impact study would be the best, most comprehensive tool to say yes or no, if it's possible, not just this requirement of the code. So we're just proposing to take it out. Again, to be more flexible with the development, uh, the development of schools here in Summerton. Any questions on that? Well, that concludes my presentation on uh, Text Amendment Case PLN 21-0013. Very well. Is there a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, this is Ron Rice. Uh, make a motion we approve uh, all the pre that uh, the presented uh, items. Very well. It's been moved. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. In the second, is there all of us in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very well. So, case or item number two, resulting case PLM 21 0014. Um, Mr. Chairman and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, the item before you is a proposed rezoning of four parcels on Somerton Avenue. I'm going to share with you a uh, location map so that you know exactly which ones I'm talking about.
Okay. So the subject parcels of this rezoning case are 1401, 1415, 1431, and 1449 North Summerton Avenue, as shown here, being rezoned to R3 uh, multifamily residential. That is for the that is the proposal. The the top two on the north are currently zoned commercial C2, and the bottom two are zoned R16 single family residential. The, the proposal is to rezone all these four parcels to R3 multifamily residential for the purpose of building a luxury apartment complex. That is all I have as far as information on the apartment complex. I haven't received any renderings, any elevations to show you at this point. Um, but the developer told me that that is his intention. He, to quote him, he said he wants to do something exactly like the apartments on Arizona Avenue in Yuma. I don't know if you've seen them. It's this. Yes, Mesa Heights. Mm -hmm. To quote him, that is exactly what he said. He wants to copy and paste that onto here. So, but I don't have anything to show you right now. But um, it's going to be um, staff's recommendation that the commission table this item to next month's meeting. Uh, for one reason, there is a requirement for the applicant to have a neighborhood meeting uh, with these neighbors here to explain the project and, and, and just have a one-on-one -on -one session with them. And uh, he has not yet done this. So this meeting has not yet happened, and this is a hard requirement as part of the rezoning process. It, it occasionally does happen. The city doesn't do these for people, and it's sometimes they just forget or they aren't they just don't happen meetings but he's been reminded he's sent out his invitation i don't know if they've received it but i've been in contact with him so he's going to have his neighborhood meeting he's going to come back with the results of that we're going to put together a staff for you a staff report for you and um pres presented at the next month's meeting if that's that's what we were recommending that you table this item for next month. Yes. So, um, the requirement, the 300 feet, or what is his neighbor's the radius? Yes. Everyone within a 300 foot radius of any, the outer boundary of any of the parcels. Uh, received an invitation to tonight's meeting, and uh, they should be getting an invitation as well to the neighborhood meeting, which is being put together by the applicant. Saul, who sends those invitations? The city? Um, commissioners and they has when the the uh, for the neighborhood meeting, it's the developer, the applicant. In this case, it's uh, Mr. Ramon Arias. So, so he's responsible do, for, sorry, go ahead. So how do we know that the residents within those 300 feet did receive the invitation? Other than I know we post like a, a poster out there, but. Yes, so so it's kind of, it's, it's a two, the city does some notification and the applicant does some notification, for example, the applicant, the developer, is required to have the neighborhood meeting. The city is required to invite people to the public hearing and to publish in the newspaper and to post the sign on the property. Now, when the applicant conducts his meeting, he has to write a written summary as to who was in attendance, what was um, discussed, objections, if any, the more detail, the better. And he has to submit that to us so that we can include that in the staff report. If no one shows up to the meeting, he has to take a piece of paper and write, no one showed up to the meeting. I was there from 6 p.m. to 7. Simple as that. And we just, it, it, it's kind of an honor system, whether he has it or not. But at least um, if he has something in writing saying that he held the meeting, then that is uh, all we need to move the process forward. At this point, we don't even have that, though, because the meeting hasn't occurred.
So just a general question. I understand it. Um, we can't answer this yet, but do we know if it's going to be um, low income subsidized housing? Because the one in Arizona isn't that. Yeah, it's a housing. That detail, I actually don't know. Um, Mr. Mr. Radius hasn't described if it's going to be a market rate apartment or if he's uh, partnering with the depart housing department to to do something similar to that. But um, I'm sure that that question is going to come up at this neighborhood meeting, and um, he's going to submit a report to us. And then if it's not on there, I'm, I'm just going to call him up and ask. But at this point, um, since we didn't move the, the project forward, I didn't do that much research as okay. to what the target Thank market you. is. Okay, so is there a motion to fail? I second it. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Planning and Zoning Commission. Very well. Thank you, everybody, for attending a meeting, either virtual or in person. I think it's the first time we've had a full quorum in a while, so thank you. Um, some of your current events, if we? Yes, Mr. Chairman and members of the Planning and Money Commission, Chairman Squadri, Community Director. And speaking of next meeting, we have already two items for the next regular meeting that is scheduled for June 21st. And we have the rezoning case at Bridges Table. And also, we have a final plan for mass subdivision on the northwest side of the city, a small subdivision. Oh, no, that's already been approved. The, the, the preliminary has already been approved, and now the, the developer is coming back with the final plan. Hopefully, we're going to get this approved, and we're going to see some more um, residential development on that side. It's a small subdivision, but we're getting ready to present to you the final plan at the June meeting. So we have two items. So far for the next June meeting. Um, also, under the current project that we have, by the Soul Phase 3 subdivision continues to be under construction on the improvement side. If you haven't seen that side lately, it's about 80 to 85 percent of completion. So you now you can see streets and they're building the uh, block wall, the perimeter walls to the subdivision, and and you, you can see a lot more movement, movement on that side. Um, we also have several projects. Saul, Saul is being very, very busy with new development coming to uh, Main Street. Uh, we have a request for a tattoo parlor. We have Campus Atadero, a taco place that is coming to the uh, Somerton Valley Center, and everybody's all excited about So we're working with them, uh, trying to assist as much as possible with their permit uh, process so they can um, start Soon. We also have, and this is new, uh, we got a request for um, Subway, the um, sandwich shop. Uh, they're trying to open up a location here in Somerton, in that same location, the Somerton Valley Center as well. Uh, we've been in communication with them, and uh, they're trying to get all the information as far as what they need from the city so they can start their uh, an improvement, whatever is needed for them to, to land their business here in Somerton as well. And also we have a car detailing business that is coming potentially on Cactus Plaza, South, South Somerton Avenue by Guerra del Sol School. There's a uh, sushi house and there's a little corner where they have uh, polar, polarization of glass polarization business. Uh, that's where they're planning to do the uh, yeah, car detailing business as well. And we continue working with part of the commerce subdivision, our commercial subdivision on the west end of town, um, where the uh, clinic, the Sanchez Clinic, uh, there's a, a gym coming, Fourth Avenue gym is coming. Uh, there's more commercial 
uh, development on that same area. And then to the north of that area, we are going to have the high school, the, the future high school, the city park. And north of that is going to be some residential development that we are already seeing some movement over there. Um, Central Chavez Avenue, uh, public works is installing the, uh, the, the street light there that is going to be located there. And also getting some improvements ready to when these other developments are coming in. So uh, we're going to be hopefully beginning at the end of this year. And for the next three, four years, we're going to see a lot of development on the west end of town. So we happy about that. Other than that, than that um, perhaps our next meeting will probably be in person. So the virtual portion of the uh, commissioner uh, may not happen anymore, uh, thanks to all this um, easing of the restrictions from the CDC. And now we can, if we are all uh, fully vaccinated, we can stay in the same room all together. And, and for the most part, I believe most of us are, are vaccinated. So we are just waiting for city council to give us their they're okay listing all the restrictions that we have in place right now about the distancing, and um, we'll let you know if the next meeting will be in person or if we are going to continue with the virtual portion of it. It's, it's okay, it works for, for all of us, but it's getting to the point, thankfully, that um, we are not as restricted as we were the past few months, so it might be the, the time that we are going to come back to um, in person meetings. Happy to hear that, actually. So that's all I have on my side. Any questions? Very well, it's 7.04. Meeting adjourned. Good night, everybody. Bye.